Uh, my name is Steph Arif. Uh, today I'll be presenting the paper Reprogrammable Federated Learning and uh, Improving Utility Privacy Trade-off by Model Reprogramming. Uh, this work was done in uh, collaboration uh, with uh, Pinyu Chen from IBM during my summer uh, internship and my advisor, Alex Giddens. So next slide, please. Yeah. So just a quick overview of federated learning so that everyone is on the, on, on the same page. Um, so data is in, um, in a distributed environment where the goal of different parties is to train uh, a, a global model together. But the data is distributed on different clients. Um, the goal is uh, not to share the data of each client with uh, a server, but uh, the way federated learning usually works is each of the clients locally uh, perform local training and are sh sharing either the gradients or the model parameters with the server. And this counts as one round of uh, federated learning. It's sure, uh, and as the training progresses, this happens after a certain number of rounds till there is a consensus between all the parties that uh, ab about a, a certain global model. Next. So a naive way of looking at federated learning would say, well, you know, since we're not sharing any private training data, so federated setting should be uh, very secure in terms of, let's say one of the parties is an adversary or really wants to recover the data from one of the participating clients. However, uh, a work from, uh, um, a work called for Deep Leakage from Gradients showed that these uh, gradients that are shared during the feder federated learning process actually leak information about the private training data of each of the participating clients. They actually solve an optimization problem how with access to the gradients and an access to a model of a, a client and we can per, we can recover completely in some cases the private training data of the participating clients. Thus our conclusion is that federated learning, naively training federated learning is not going to be secure. So a tool that uh, obviously this has been sort of the theme of today's um, of, to, of, of today is to use differential privacy. What if each of the participating client trains in a differential private manner on its private data sets? Do we then have uh, any form of guarantee on privacy? Well, obviously differential privacy, we, we, we have those certain bounds in which we can argue that yes, now uh, there is a certain, uh, a, a, a certain uh, privacy that can be uh, uh, argued from a client perspective. All right. Then, if that is the case, then definitely we would have solved the secure learning problem in federated environments. Next slide. But privacy learning comes at a cost, and the more privately trained you want your model to be, it comes at a cost of degraded accuracy. And it also makes intuitive sense, right? We have noisy gradients, so our convergence would be compromised, our privacy budget would limit the number of training steps that we can use to train our global model. And so the conclusion or the key takeaway is that if we are going to um, uh, train a model using differential privacy, there is going to be a cost of its utility and thus uh, naively training uh, a model using differential privacy would not be sufficient, if, especially if you really want it to be very private. It's not going to be. Uh, it's not going to be sufficient to uh, from from a utility perspective. Thus, in the next slide, please. So, in 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 our work, we show, we sort of sh uh, show this um, explore this new idea of um, transfer learning, which we call as model reprogramming. You know, the, the conventional studies have different transfer learning approaches in which we use a pre-trained model and we privately uh, we, tr uh, tr we privately train, uh, each of the clients are privately training using DPSCD on a pre-trained model, but th there is still a trade-off that does exist. And in this work, we explore uh, the effect of using model reprogramming in both the federated settings and in the centralized setting. And our conclusions from our, study is that across data sets, across different models and different federated frameworks that we study, 
reprogrammable federated learning outperforms baselines in all of these different uh, settings, particularly in some settings by a huge margin. Next. So let's sort of go with what are the different methods with which uh, a client or any um, a machine learning pr practitioner can use to train its model in a differential private manner. So a conventional approach is you want to harness the power of a source model. Let's say we want to use ResNet 50 as our source model, very strong model, and train it on a CIFAR 10 data set, right? Just train, you have, you have those training samples, train them in a differential privately setting, setting and use, and the green, the, so, so the green color, uh, just highlights that you are basically training the entire model in a differential private manner on this target data set. So that would be one approach in which we, with which you can train your model. Next slide, please. But from a utility perspective, this has shown to perform really, really bad. So the other approach could be uh, use a five fully fine tune, which means not only are you using the model structure, but you're also using the, uh, the pre-trained weights as a starting point to privately train your model. And that would be called this as full fine tuning as so we have, so we not only have this model, but it also has been trained on some data set. And we use this private data set to train uh, in a differential privately manner on this source model. Green again, color just highlights that all the layers are trainable in this particular setting. This also has shown to have very poor performance and the, the conventional or the state of the art approach is more partial fine tuning. Next slide, please. So partial fine tuning is an improvement on a fully fine tuned method as opposed to training all your uh, different, all, all your parameters in a differential private manner. We are training certain layers or you can see this model that particular setting that we consider in this work is training only the last layer in a differential private manner. The whole model has been trained on a public data set uh, in a non-private manner, and we are just using um, the, the private data set to train some layers uh, in, a, uh, in, in, in a private manner. Next slide, please. We, so this study actually looks at a different approach of, of, uh, transfer, uh, of transfer learning, which is called Model reprogramming. So model reprogramming is uh, like, use, uh, like uh, using uh, the partial fine tune method. We have uh, the training split into two different phases. One of them is the non-private training, which you are using a public data set and you have a source model and you train that, uh, uh, let's say a uh, ResNet 50 model, you're training that on ImageNet, ImageNet and using that source model, as you can see in the private training phase, to uh, to train this uh, in, in a private uh, in a private manner on some target data set. The difference is you are you don't touch the weights or the parameters of your source model. You're training only the mapping. You are training the mapping from the domain of the target data set to the domain of the source data set. So this box that you can see in the private training is sort of you can draw a box around it. So basically a black box. You're not training any in any of the, you're not changing any of the parameters of your source model, but you're only projecting it from your source space to, sorry, from your target space to your source space. And this projection is learnable. Similarly, your projection from your source output to back to the target space is also learnable. So only these learnable projections are part of the training process. And these learnable projections are trained in a differential private manner without touching the weights of the source model, as opposed to any of the transfer learning methods that we have seen. Next slide. So just to emphasize this point again, you can see this red color emphasizing that none of the, none, this, this entire source model is not trainable and only the mapping from the target space to the source space is trainable. So for instance, you can, you have this targets, the, the way we implement model reprogramming is we uh, have this uh, input in your target space. We zero pad for an, an image, let's say a CFAR 10 image, that's 32 by 32 by three, you zero pad it, and then you add this small perturbation that's learnable. And we have this characterized by those M and theta. M is basically your mask and it's one and zeros based on, well, 
we, we, we go, I go, we go, I go on to explain how we can choose M and theta, but theta is sort of your learnable parameter in your project projection. From your output, uh, the outward projection that, that is mapping from your source space to your target space, there's also, you can just connect a fully connected layer that is also learnable from the source model output to the target space. That's, that's also, that's very simple. That's just a fully connected layer. And we have a softmax, a softmax on those outputs that's, uh, that's characterized the mapping from your source domain to your target domain. Just to emphasize, these are the only two trainable layers. Next slide, please. So the question that does this model reprogramming provide any improvement in the privacy trade-off? So what we did was on, and uh, as we go on in this talk, sort of explore on those different data sets and different settings. But for these choice of parameters, which is a very, uh, so four minutes, we, on, on this choice of parameters, we train our model in a differential private manner. You can see this epsilon just showing. So this epsilon value, smaller epsilon, epsilon values indicate that it's more private, a larger epsilon value show that it's relatively less private. You can see this performance improvement. The blue curve highlights the best, best available baseline that we have, which is partial fine tuning. Model reprogramming improves even on partial, on, on partial fine tune. You can, and it also makes more intuitive sense why those other two baselines that is that is training from scratch or fully fine tuning would have degraded performance as you are training all the parameters in a DP manner. Next slide, please. So those are straight off existing federated setting. So the way we implement or explore or study this problem uh, in uh, a federated environment is each of the clients is doing either model reprogramming, fully fine tuned, partial fine tune, or training from scratch. The server is only involved in Fed averaging after every round. And we want to, with the, the really the next question for us was that do these performance benefits really uh, exist in a distributed framework or not? So just a quick oh, algorithm overview. Uh, I kept it very non-mathy uh, non just to explain what we are doing. The clients are training in any of the before, before mentioned methods. Server is performing the Fed averaging only on trainable parameters. It just also shows the benefit of using our model reprogramming because you're not communicating all of the parameters in every global round. The server is keeping tra track of the budget consumed and we, the method we use to calculate our epsilon value is using moments accountant. And as uh, so for a user, from a user's perspective, if there is a certain, if, if you want to train your global model with a certain budget, you provide that and the server keeps track of that as, as it crosses or it nears that threshold, we know that our training has our training is completed. So in the federated setting, to uh, our experimental evaluation showed again a great great performance improvement than conventional partial fine tuning. And so our next goal was to see how generalizable these findings are with different source models and different target data sets. Next slide. And our conclusions were that this performance improvement is consistent across many different source models that we evaluated. We have, you can see the source models are from eight, from a small, uh, relatively shallow to a relatively deep models. And we see this improvement in model reprogramming over the existing baseline in a, in, in a very consistent manner. And this also is evaluated for other data sets like Oxford IIT or Blood MNIST that shows that this performance gap is uh, exists. Another thing that you can see is that as the architecture is more deeper, uh, model reprogramming provides harnesses its potential in a more robust manner, as opposed to simply fine tuning uh, your uh, any of the layers of a source of the source model. Next. So we also we have looked at that. That does this also make more intuitive sense? Well, this is sort of our. Are, are, are we, we, we investigated how many parameters are getting trained uh, in model reprogramming. So compared to training from scratch or, compare, uh, or, or uh, fully fine tuned, model reprogramming has less parameter trained because it's only training those mapping layers. But compared to the uh, partial fine tune, it actually has a lot more training parameters. And 
Thus, it sort of see, feels a bit counterintuitive that if more parameters are getting trained, why will it have those uh, differential privacy advantages? But our findings are consistent across many different data sets and models that show that model reprogramming is just harnessing that, uh, that potential of the source model in a, more, in a more robust manner, irrespective even if it has more trainable parameters. Slide, please. And so we investigated what if more, there are more local epochs and we see this in three and five local epochs and even more local epochs, this benefits a whole. Next slide, please. And for more clients, when the dis data distribution is even larger, our, our results are still hold. Next slide, please. And in the non-IAD case, we consider two different settings where the classes, there is a class imbalance on each of the clients or there is a distribution of training samples on each of the clients. Again, we see model reprogramming does remarkably well. And for source models, again, for deeper source models, we've had this finding that a partial fine tune actually does worse uh, when the model depth increases. And model reprogramming not only improves, uh, it harnesses the, uh, the, 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 the benefit of the, that source model, but it, it's sort of like very, uh, I, I, want, I want to use the word agnostic, but I want to say that it, you don't have to worry about which layers to train, which which uh, like in, in, in transfer learning, you would have to think, all right, we, are, we only investigated the last layer. What happens if we invest, what if happens if we train two or three different layers? Model reprogramming harnesses that potential in a very robust manner. You can see this improvement as the depth of the architecture is increasing, that model reprogramming provides a lot of uh, benefit uh, in, uh, in that accuracy privacy trade-off. And so just a summer, quick summary of our work. We, uh, this work evaluates model reprogramming federated setting. Also, in, from a privacy perspective, this is the first work uh, to investigate in both centralized and federated framework. Our results are consistent across data sets and models. And we have a good finding of uh, utilizing the strength of source model uh, in our framework. Our, uh, this model reprogramming also has a good communi communication, uh, or provides less communication overhead because uh, co compared to na naive fine tuning methods as, as it only is training those input and output uh, mappings. Next slide, please. So the future direction would be to analyze the theoretical, uh, to, to analyze its complexity, convergent rate analysis, and to investigate what's happening. Why exactly is, uh, what exactly is the reason model reprogramming does provide such a, a, a robust, has such a robust privacy utility trade-off uh, uh, irregardless of different architectures and uh, source and um, of source models and different target data sets, we also would like to investigate in different uh, federated settings to basically investigate how it provides those, or or, or to, to 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 basically argue that does these results hold in a more complex federated settings or not? Yeah, yeah, that these are references and yeah.